Now let's look at moments and center mass in two dimensions. When we looked at this problem in one dimension, what we had was a system of mass points on the line. And we wanted to find the point on the line such that when I sat my point system on that point, our system balanced, meaning if there were forces coming in from the top, say gravity, we didn't have it favoring one side or the other, it just hovered. We want the same problem now, except we want it in the plane. So we have a bunch of points in the plane. We'll have a position x1, y1, mass m1. We'll have that for each point we consider. And then I want to know, same idea. If I lift this up, where do I put my finger so that the system balances, so that this plate that has all the points in it doesn't tip over and fall down? So before we needed two items to get to our answer in one dimension. So for the 2D problem, we'll need three items, but they're all going to look pretty familiar. So let's take a look. My first item, notice we have M1, X1, and then we take the sum of all those. Well, that's just our moment about the origin from before. Only now we're not going to call it the moment about the origin. We're going to call it about the moment about the y-axis, m sub y. Now, why am I going to call something that has a bunch of x in it the moment about the y-axis? Okay, you'll notice we're in opposition with the terminology, with the notation. Well, think about what's happening here. There are no y's occurring in here, so I might as well be pushing all my points down or up to the x-axis, and then we're looking at our old problem. But what's really happening here is our fulcrum was a point before. Now the fulcrum is going to be the whole entire line. If I think of this as the fulcrum, then we have the plane. The plane's able to pivot back and forth this way. So that's why we say this is my. Our second item, well, where I had the x's before, I'm just going to call them y's now. And then that's going to be the moment about the x-axis. The geometry is going to be the same idea. Here, well, there are no x's in our equation, so I might as well push everything to the y-axis. And then notice we have our fulcrum at the x-axis, and we're talking about where does it balance when we go forwards and backwards. With both my moments, my moment about the y-axis and my moment about the x-axis, we could divide by the total mass, and that's going to give me my x bar from before, and now we'll also pick up a y bar. So, remember, total mass, sum of all our masses, and then the way I get my x bar and y bar is going to be by taking the appropriate moment and then divide by m. And just remember, the appropriate moment is going to be the one with the opposite letter. Confusing, but that's the way it works, and it makes sense. Let's do an example. So, okay, you can forget about this part on. I'm going to have my system. We're going to have four points. We're going to have masses at each point, and we'll have positions. So, we want to compute the moments about the y-axis and the x-axis, and then I want the center of mass. Here's the picture that goes with the system I just drew. So, notice we have our four points, and we're going to figure out where that center of mass is. One thing that's always going to be a check on your center of mass is that your center of mass is always going to have to live inside the region bounded by our points. Okay. We proceed. So systematically, I note, if I want my, it's going to be the mass times the x-coordinate. So we just push those all over. And then you notice when I multiply them and add them, I get a minus 5. We're also going to need the total mass, so I can sum down here to get a 10. If I want the moment about the x-axis, we're going to use all the y values. So then we're just going to multiply this times y value and then proceed all the way down. We add down, that's going to give me an 11. So our definition says to get our x-bar, we're going to take the moment about the y-axis divided by the total mass, so I get minus a half. For my moment for my y-bar, I'm going to take the moment about the x-axis and then divide by the total mass, and that's going to give me a 1.1. We notice on our graph 
that's going to wind up, we're going to go back by a half, up by 1.1, and that's winding up in the middle of our region. So we probably did this right.